Hi friends, so we uh, what we are trying to study in this uh, video is, is principal component analysis. It's one of the great tool of feature optimization. So what we uh, what this does is let's say we are trying to study the wine data set and we have uh, these attributes which uh, are the ingredients of, of wine and we uh, are trying to understand uh, for identifying three different kind of wines Calcida Creek, Peter Michael or Evening Landings how well or how we can optimize uh, the the selection with minimizing the the, the components which make uh, or which determine the, 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 the uh, label so what principal component would do is based on it would try to select the variance it would try to look for the maximum variance and based on that it would try to create a component orthogonal component uh, and it would go with the, the first it could have uh, for 10 attributes it could have 10 and less principal components the first one would have the maxi maximum variance and uh, so on it would go with the in the decreasing order so how it would work is let's uh, take a look with the with the uh, example now if you see what we are trying to do with this command is we are trying to build the principal components for the wine data set and we are saying scale is equal to true so what we are trying to do essentially you cannot compare a salary attribute with an with an age or you can cannot compare a salary attribute with the distance traveled so because both of them essentially are in different units so we want to z transform that uh, now what z transform is i would uh, request you to just refer uh, a statistics book and understand how c transformation of what it means and how it does basically it's it's, it's just trying to uh, bring the the orders of the attributes in the same uh, unit so basically it would just mean something in, in uh, z transform would be a mean of zero and a standard and, and a standard deviation and, and variance of one so so that's all we're trying to do uh, when we're saying scale is equal to true uh, so let's try to run this principal component and uh, what this principal component would have is, is uh, it has the rotation center so what we said is it it has a standard deviation the rotation center scale and and the values x is the is the values so uh, let's take a look at uh, the components so if you see these are the comp principal components or uh, and basically it has it has plotted that in terms of the the, the maximum variance on across so uh, not much that we can understand here but i would just uh, i'm sure this would mean a lot so if we just uh, take a look at this what we see is the first let's choose zoom this and i'll, I'll explain this if you if you take a look the first principal uh, uh, component variance is about 36.1%. So if you see here, for a value of one, you have uh, you have the cumulative uh, the variance about 36%. The next one explains uh, additional 19%. So and so on and so forth. So for two, you have you have uh, about uh, 36 plus uh, 20 that would be about about 56 percent so you, you, you there you go you have that uh, and so on now what we are trying to do is we can say that with eight components eight principal components we are able to explain over 90 percent of variance in the data which means after a certain point the data doesn't vary much so if i uh, there is no need for me to actually use although we had about 12 attributes the uh, we can uh, using principal components we can explain the maximum variance with only eight principal components if we want 90 percent of uh, accuracy so uh, efficiency so so what we say here is with this diagram uh, that that with for this if we were to use only first eight principal components we should be able to reasonably well uh, uh, you know label the data in, in three different categories so again uh, this is the data with the labels we have the wine value as as the label of, of the wine now let's try to what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put uh, 
the principal components that we have drawn along with the wine valve into a data frame so if you take a look here what you would find is we have 12 principal components and 13 principal components and then we have the result which is the wine valve which I have kind of just added and uh, then I am simply going to segregate my training data with with the first eight principal components which I said I need to be able to identify uh, then with the proportion of 50 percent I segregate my data set into training and test and then I build my model so if you see here I am using SVM to uh, build the model and then test it so if you can see here with just eight uh, principal components I am very close I am, I am pretty close to identify the different labels so uh, if we, 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 we saw the clustering example last uh, video if you if you're taking a look at principal components you can see uh, with using just the eight principal components I am wrong by only one record there you go you are bang on so uh, again just going with the same uh, example you know if what we have seen is principal component is, is a, a great way of, of uh, you know uh, uh, being able to identify when you when you have hundred plus uh, attributes when you have a lot of attributes and you do not know which of them are actually significant and make sense and which are the ones which are uh, causing the maximum variance to be able to or which have the most predicting power you kind of uh, you know use your principal components and then take it from there uh, the, the next video is is kind of uh, a, a very different one we will we'll utilize this this power of pca to do anomaly uh, anomaly detection so uh, it's it's a very important uh, and a niche way of of of, of doing it and i am sure it will be uh, really exciting so uh, let's look forward to it uh, i'll catch you in the next video thank you